Hello boys and girls, Old Man's Adventures here. Today we're looking at Project Axum e-bike and I'm going to go over a few things that uh, I ran into while building this that uh, are little pitfalls that you will run into if you try to convert any bike to an e-bike with the Bafang BBS02 uh, kit and there is the Bafang BBS02 okay first of all uh, when uh, I stripped out my bottom bracket and I went and put this uh, uh, BBS02 through the bottom bracket uh, the first thing I noticed and uh, I'm a big fan of Johnny Nerd Out, and uh, he had brought this to attention in one of his videos. Right there, well, I don't know if you can see it or not. Well, I was hoping you could see. There it is. There it is. Okay, if you look between the chain stay and the gearbox, you see just a little bit of the floor showing through. Okay, you have to have clearance there. That cannot touch. If it does, you're putting your gearbox, your motor and your gearbox in uh, some uh, bind, in a bind when you tighten that bottom bracket up. So you're looking for clearance there. And that little bit of daylight you see coming through there, right there, uh-oh, if I can get it to focus. It's not wanting to focus. Right there. That little bit of daylight you see coming through there, that's what you gotta have. Now to achieve that, I put on some bottom bracket spacers down there where it goes through the bottom bracket. And I don't think you can see that in this. I don't think you can see that. But anyway, bottom bracket spacers. Okay, I think I used one uh, three millimeter spacer. Maybe it was a two millimeter spacer to get that clearance. But you definitely do not want that to touch. Another thing, if you're using this on a 73 millimeter bottom bracket, it will work. However, this nut right here, they send you a uh, Bafang cover nut to go over this that kind of dresses it up a little bit. But uh, on a 73 millimeter bottom bracket, you will not have enough room to get that cover nut, that uh, bling on there. Uh, it, it, and it tells you in the instructions that you will not have enough room to get it on there. Okay, next thing I ran into was right here. Okay, as you can see, I've got an offset, uh, offset crank arm on the non-drive side. That is because, here's what Bafang sends with the kit. Bafang sends this arm, which is completely straight. Completely straight. Okay, uh, that arm, when put on this, will strike right here. It will strike every time it comes around. Hit. Hit. So, had to find a... Uh, now, the original crank... The original crank that was on the axum was this arm and you can see it's offset a little bit it has a curve in it and that's to clear that chain stay that's so it will clear that chain stay and I thought it's not going to be a big deal I'll just use my old arm however here's what you run into in, in that situation the old arm that comes off is a square taper the new arm that they send you is a diamond taper. You can't mix the two. If you mix the two, your pedals are not 180 degrees apart from each other. And you'll end up, if you tried that, you'd end up galloping like a horse. You'd have to jump up and down on the pedals. So anyway, that didn't work. So what I did do, and as you can see, I used the straight arm on the drive side 
because on the drive side you've got the gearbox in there that pushes everything out a little bit so on the on the drive side you've got plenty of clearance okay but on the non-drive side that's where you have to have that offset arm to get the clearance so what I did was I went down to my local bike shop and I walked in and I said hey guys I'm looking for an offset crank arm with a diamond taper they walked back in the back room they came out in a few minutes and said here you go uh, used part five dollars and I uh, brought it home I did have to paint it because it was unpainted it was a uh, uh, almost a uh, almost a very shiny aluminum so I had to sand it a little bit put some paint on it and uh, there you go five dollar fix uh, but from Bafang I found that you can order an offset arm a Bafang offset arm on the internet and uh, it's like twenty nine dollars and I you know I'll take five dollars over twenty nine dollars any day uh, okay the next issue you might have is mounting the battery uh, mounting the battery on this bike was difficult because this bike has these pre-attached cable carriers here these cables are supposed to be up here in these and they go all the way down the, the, the uh, down tube well there's one right there under where I needed to put the battery there's another one down here right there uh, and I'm like okay how am I gonna take care of that uh, like I said I, I like watching Johnny nerd out uh, he did a uh, he did a video where he did one of these and he didn't go into detail about what he did uh, he, he mentioned that the the that these things were in the way of mounting his battery but he didn't go into detail about how he corrected that so what I did I didn't want to grind them off I didn't want to uh, mess up my bike frame and so as you can see under here I've got two one in one eighth inch aluminum spacers that I put on here and also to mount your battery you're gonna to have to have there are screws in this battery mount that go into the go into the frame there are two up here through a metal plate and then there's one down here at the bottom and uh, what I used there was I used nut certs or I, I always called them nut certs but they're threaded insert you buy a tool uh, and I got mine at Harbor Freight and uh, you you drill a hole the size of the nut cert you stick it through there and then you squeeze it and it causes it to uh, um, mushroom on the inside and gives you a threaded hole so that's what I used here I'm, I cut these out as you can see there there's a, a it's one those these are one piece okay but they're cut outs to go around this and that spaces me up where I, these don't become an issue anymore down here I just use two nuts two quarter inch nuts as my as my spacer down here and anyway what you end up with when you put those nut certs in is the same kind of the same kind of uh, threaded hole that you would for a water bottle cage it's pretty much sim pretty similar and uh, so anyway that's how I, I overcame that uh, the next thing you might have issue with is routing your cables uh, Johnny nerd out in his video uh, brought his cables up between and that's what I did and brought them up the bottom of the down tube um, and that's okay but you end up with a lot of excess cable as you can see right here I've got cable wadded up in front of the in front of the uh, uh, headset in front of the head tube and uh, that's okay it doesn't bother me being there but it's not as clean as I'd like it now some people have have run their cables up 
they bring them up this way and then up this way to get rid of some of that excess cable. And that might be a good idea because if you look down through here, if you look down through here, anyway, you can see down through there that right here, if you can see where I'm pointing, there is some space there between the gearbox and the frame. And that possibly could bring your cables up through that. I brought the shift sensor cable up through there. And you could possibly bring the other cables up through there too. And then, then up the head tube. But the problem with that is you got your shift cable here. And anything you run up through there is going to be interfering possibly with that shift cable. And I didn't want anything to interfere with that shift cable, so I just ran them up the, the down tube. Um, the, uh, I found that the best place to get the, the kit was from uh, eBay. Uh, Greenergia, I don't know how you pronounce it, but anyway. Uh, that's who I bought it from on eBay. It was uh, 550 something, 557, something like that. 554 maybe. Uh, then I bought my battery from Ingui. Uh, you can see them right there, Ingui. I guess that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> Uh, that is a 48 volt uh, 15 amp hour battery uh, so far the range looks like it's going to be about 30 miles give or take um, depending on how you use it and what pedal assist mode and all that but that's about average uh, on a for an e-bike so I'm not I'm not terribly disappointed with that a lot of people go with a 17 and a half hour uh, amp hour battery and that would work as well the uh, again here uh, another pitfall you might run into besides the the water cables up here which like I said that doesn't bother me a whole lot but here's another thing this bike was equipped with hydraulic brakes the Maroka hydraulic brakes and they send you these sensors when you have hydraulic brakes with these little magnets now, I don't know if you can see that magnet there or not, but there was no way on these levers to, uh, to mount that magnet with glue. Now, these sensors come with a double-sided tape, so you just pull the back off of that and stick it on there. And they've, they've held on pretty good. Uh, it's been on there a couple weeks now, or about a week. Uh, and I've not had either one of them come off. I have had to reposition them. And that's one thing about that 3M tape. You can give it a little reposition by just nudging it a little bit one way or the other. And then re-pressurizing, re you know, putting more pressure on it and getting it to stick. Uh, because uh, you have to play with them. You have to play with them. There was no good place to put the magnet. So I ended up using zip ties. And I guess you can see that. Uh, I, I took two little bitty zip ties and went through that lever because the magnet's got a hole in the middle of it. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the magnet has a hole in the middle of it. And I put two of those little zip ties through that hole and went around the lever and, and back through and zipped them. And uh, one in each direction, one on top, one on the bottom. And it does not interfere with the operation of the lever. lever. And it does work. So that was a uh, that was how I did that, uh, and it has worked just fine. But I'm I'm looking at a way to uh, get a a more permanent uh, more permanent attachment there because it, while it works, uh, it's not as good as I'd like. Uh, that's some of the pitfalls another pitfall you're going to end up with uh, this this bike was had a 10 speed group set and uh, 
I'm going to show you here. Oh, another thing you're going to need. Shift sensor. I did not. There's the shift sensor right there. That little doodad. Got a cable goes down, plugs in underneath the motor. Uh, you, those shift sensors are miraculous little things. I mean, they work wonders. You wouldn't believe how much, how much, uh, how good they work. Uh, you shift this thing and it cuts that power and then pulls it back on as soon as it shifts. It's fantastic. Everybody needs a shift sensor. Okay. That's it right there. And I got it. I got it. Funny story. Uh, the motor kit came from Green Greener Gia, I think is how you pronounce it. I don't know. Uh, the battery from Ingui on Amazon. This was eBay. Uh, this shift sensor. These same people uh, sent me a link to a shift sensor on eBay and it was like 30 bucks. I bought this one from walmart.com for like 12.95. Yeah. And funny story, when I got this, the address, the return address on the ship on the carton was Ackle Mile. Now, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Ackle Mile, but they make e-bikes. And they make e-bikes with a 750 uh, watt Bafang mid-drive. Well, when I got this from Walmart.com, guess where it came from? Ackle Mile. So, same place. Guys, this through Walmart.com was $12.95. Same shift sensor through eBay green or Gia was going to cost me $29. Uh, so that's that chain line. I was going to talk about chain line. All right. As you can see, looking at the chain line now, the bike is in Let's see, let's count it down. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're in seventh gear. We're in seventh gear. And if you look at that chain line, I don't know if you can see it or not. Chain line looks pretty good. Pretty good. But when you start downshifting, when you get up here on your big cog, your chain line's going to be way off. And that's because this stock Bafang gear chain ring is not offset enough. Uh, they, they make them that are offset a little more, but what you got to watch out then is you end up getting in trouble down here with your chain stay or you end up getting in trouble over here on the gearbox because I bought I bought one sorry I bought a sprocket for up here that was smaller and uh, it wouldn't work because it rubbed it was smaller, so it didn't give me problems on the chain stay, but it rubbed. It was a 104 bolt center diameter, which I like on my regular mountain bikes, and it would rub the gear case, the bolts. So that was a no no. So just be careful what you do. Uh, Johnny Nerdout says L uh, Lucky or Leaky, however you want to pronounce it, makes a narrow wide chain ring that is offset but you still got to watch you got to watch that clearance right down there because if you get it offset too much you're going to be into your chain stay and that's no good okay so that just about covers the pitfalls of uh of 
converting a bike to an e-bike. Uh, other than that, I've had no issues. Everything worked as it should. Uh, love it. It is very powerful. It will climb like a billy goat. Uh, it will go very fast. I uh, love the fact that you can use your gearing. That, that's what all my other e-bikes were missing was the, the mechanical advantage you get by using your gearing. Now I will say, like I was talking about the chain line, if you get down into this first gear cog, I have had it throw the chain one time and it threw the chain off of this cog up here. Maybe a narrow wide, the leaky narrow wide chain ring offset just a little bit more would do wonders. I don't know, but they're expensive. They're like, uh, I think they call them a bling ring. And I really like a, I really like a guard on there. Now I will say another thing, this guard, this little plastic chain guard they send you is held on from the back side by five little uh, sheet metal screws. This is plastic. It's very soft plastic. When you put that guard on there, if you're not careful, if you're not really careful how you tighten those up, you will strip them because they're very short. Very short little screws. Uh, you have to be really careful. You have to feel uh, when they're tightening up and not over tighten them. Because if you over tighten them, you'll strip out those holes. Because these are not very long. I'm telling you, they're tiny little screws. And uh, you really got to be careful or you'll end up. But I like, a, I like a chain guard. I like a chain guard ring on mine. So yes, I do like a uh, chain guard on mine. Keeps my pants out of the sprocket. Uh, I thought I'd, uh, I didn't, when I was showing you the brakes uh, sensors, I didn't get a very good angle on it. Uh, I, looking through my photos that I took, I found a better uh, picture here of the uh, brake sensor mounted on the, uh, with the 3M tape and how I mounted the uh, magnets on the levers with the little bitty zip ties. Uh, those magnets have a hole through the middle of them and you can run those zip ties through the holes and around the magnet And believe it or not, you know, I first when I per first put this on there I said oh, it's going to interfere when I squeeze the levers. It's going to interfere with those uh, um, Zip ties are going to interfere with the movement of the lever, but it does not uh, I don't know why it doesn't but it doesn't uh, It looks like it would but man, they just operate like silk so I'm very pleased with that. I have since uh, used some um, JB Weld Plastibond, I think it's called, to uh, glue these sensors to the housings and make sure that you, whatever you use, even before you put the uh, three, use the 3M tape, that you put uh, some uh, acetone or something on a rag and clean the area where you're going to stick that because a lot of times, uh, especially on these brake uh, uh, levers, there'll be some uh, brake fluid, mineral oil spilled at some point, and uh, they, it, it makes it hard for that stuff to bond. So make sure that you clean that off real good with some kind of solvent uh, before you put it on there, and I think you'll do well. So anyway, these are the pitfalls that I ran into. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you like and subscribe. Um, check that um, bell icon and you'll get notified when I post new videos um, I'm not in this for money uh, so I don't care how many <laughs> subscribers I have or how many uh, views my videos get or anything I just do it for information purposes maybe I can help somebody out and uh, that's that's my main goal I'm retired so I love working on bikes so have a great day, old man's adventures. I'm out of here.